Hello and welcome to another SmartWave video tutorial. In this instruction video, I would like to show you how to establish a connection to our SmartRay Echo 95 and Echo 65 3D laser triangulation sensor. At the beginning, we check the quick guide, which is available for all SmartRay sensor models, and take a closer look at the pinning of the power IO cable. In this tutorial, I would like to establish a connection to an Echo 6550. That means we first look at the pinning for the Echo 65, 75, 95 and 95 plus. Here we can see that a 24 volt DC power supply must be connected to pin 1 with the blue brown color coding to ground and pin 2 with the brown red color coding to plus 24 volt DC. The wiring of the laser safety pins is just as important as the power supply to the scanner. In our Echo 6550 model, pin 8 with the blue coating must be also connected to 0V DC, meaning ground. And pin 9 with the white yellow coating must also be connected to plus 24V DC. Regarding the Echo 95 Plus models, it actually relates to the power supply of the laser unit. That means you can run one of the two inputs, for example, through a door contact, and as soon as the door or the housing opens, the laser is deactivated immediately. The current picture shows a very simple wiring possibility via terminals to be able to operate the sensor in a laboratory power supply. The bridge between the 24 volt DC power supply and the laser safety circuit can be seen clearly. At this point, it's important to mention when using a start and data trigger source, like a light barrier or an incremental encoder, a zero volt DC potential equalization must be established between the source and the power supply of the scanner. That means a bridge of the zero volt DC so the pin number one with the brown blue color coding from the scanner and the zero volt DC of the source must be connected together. Finally, the laboratory power supply has to be set to 24 volt DC. The banana plugs are plugged into the respective sockets and the output of the power supply is activated. The power consumption per scanner should be around 300 milliamps at 24 volt DC. This was the first part. The power supply for the scanner and the laser unit is established. The second part of this tutorial is about the correct configuration of the network connection. First of all, it should be pointed out that smart ray sensors only have to be operated with a one-to-one -one network connection. This means no hubs and switches should be used. Furthermore, when using multiple scanners in one application, it is advisable to place each scanner in a unique subnet. This, for example, shortens the connection time. The graphic shows a possible network configuration. As you can see, each sensor and the associated network interface are located in a unique network address area. When selecting the Gigabit Ethernet interface, high quality components should be used. We have good experience with manufacturers such as Intel and Broadcom. On delivery, our sensors have the default IP address 192.168.178.200. For this reason, I now manually assign a static IP address to the network interface 192.168.178.10. Next, the jumper frames means the option of an increased MTU size must be activated for the interfaces being used. This can usually be activated in the configuration of the network interface and is absolutely necessary in order to be able to process the high data rates of the sensors. Here the settings should be set to 4K. It is also advisable to increase the number of network FIFO receiving buffers in the settings in order to ensure the most efficient and smooth data reception. Finally, only a possibly activated firewall stands in the way of a successful network connection. For performance reason, it is recommended to completely deactivate the firewall. 
specifically for the sensor network used. To do this, we open the advanced security window of the Windows Defender firewall and deselect all interfaces in the properties that have a network connection to a smart ray sensor. If it's not possible to deactivate the firewall for the sensor network, every application, such as the Smart Ray Studio, must be target access to all network areas in order to be able to establish a connection successfully. Last but not least, we use the Smart Ray Studio to check whether we can establish a connection to our sensor. Excellent. Everything worked out. A connection could be established and when starting a 2D live image acquisition, we already can see the laser turning on. We have now come to an end of this tutorial. I'm pleased that you stayed with me until the end. Goodbye and see you in our next tutorial.